In this video, we'll talk about principal components analysis. Principal components analysis, or PCA, is a type of exploratory factor analysis. You can use it when you're trying to summarize. Um, it produces components. There may not be a common factor among uh, items that you're, you're looking at, but in principal components analysis, all variants, all the variants in the observed variables is analyzed. And this is, just for your information, the, the default in SPSS when you're using this. Uh, I like to think of it as, um, let's say you have um, three observed variables. This is variable one, two, and this is three. In principal components analysis, you're looking at all of the variants including the shared variance, which is here. We are looking at all of the variance and observed variables, and you're analyzing that. That's just a simple explanation I like to think of. But what is a principal component? The first principal component is defined as the linear combination of the variables that has maximal variance. And the second principal component is, is the linear combination with max, maximal variance in a direction orthogonal or opposite to the first principal component, and so on to as many components are as extracted. Now consider we have a normal distribution of points shown in the figure in your book, which I have right here. So let's look at the left side. This is just a, a normal distribution it's, uh, with a positive correlation with lots of data points. Um, if we create an ellipse corresponding to the 97% confidence interval for these points right here, um, the first principal component is the major axis or the principal axis and that's this one, the longest one there. And the second principal component is the minor axis of this ellipse. Now, if all of these data points were located in a three-dimensional space, the th third principal component would be the th third orthogonal axis of the closing ellipsoid. So it would kind of come out, and that would be the third one. And the same logic extends to higher dimensional spaces. Now, the mathematical procedure for PCA, it goes along really closely to uh, what we demonstrated before in factor analysis. I think it was video 4.8. Um, two characteristics of PCA differentiate it from this, the regular factor analysis that we did. First, the mathematics in PCA is simpler and more direct. And second, it usually involves factoring the entire covariance matrix rather than the correlation matrix so that variances of the variables are taken into account. Now, it's important to know that for this process to make sense, the variables must commensurate. In other words, they must be measured on the same scale. Otherwise, it makes no sense to say that one variable has twice as much variance as the other. For example, you can, if you're comparing IQ scores to GRE scores because they're scaled differently with uh, different means and standard devi deviations, it wouldn't make sense to do a principal components analysis of a covariance matrix with these two variables included since they don't, uh, they're not uh, comparable and they don't commensurate. Now in order to illustrate PCA, we'll go back to the rank of two simplest case data um, from video 4.1 that we worked with. and uh, But now we will factor it differently. So I'm going to go to Excel here. Okay, and in PCA we will factor the covariance matrix S rather than the correlation matrix R, which we did um, previously. We will assume that the three variables, the math test, verbal test, and reasoning test, or logic test, are all measured on the same scale, just um, to demonstrate this here. So notice that the three variances in the covariance ma 
matrix differ substantially. We have 4, 16, and 22.4. Um, so variable 2 is the math test and it has a variance of 16. 3 is the logic test and 1 is the verbal test and it only has a variance of 4. So since the three tests are commensurate, that is measured on the same scale, these differences in variance are of interest and PCA will incorporate them into the analysis. So when this uh, S matrix, which is derived from raw scores, which I just provided down here so we can take a look at and we'll use later. When it's uh, factored by the same method we did in video 4.8, the first eigenvector and first eigenvalue look like this. So k1 and lambda sub 1. And the second one looks like this. Okay, So vector k sub 1 is in fact the vector of transformation coefficients for obtaining for obtaining factor scores on the first principal component. The vector k sub 1, the eigenvector normalized to 1, functions in PCA as vector t sub 1, the eigenvalue, excuse me, the eigenvector normalized to 1 divided by lambda. Um, fuck it functions um, as that vector did in obtaining factor scores. And um, this is w one of the senses in which PCA is simpler in f than factor analysis. And just to reiterate one more time, this vector, k sub 1, uh, functions in principal components as vector t sub 1 which if you remember from previous videos is just the transformation matrix which we uh, obtained by um, post multiplying the matrix of factor loadings by the matrix um, 1 over or the inverse of lambda so if that makes a little bit more sense so next we have here uh, g sub 1 which is the matrix of first component product and it's created by post multiplying k sub 1 by its transpose. So I'm going to copy um, that and then do a paste special to its transpose. And then you multiply the resulting matrix by the eigenvalue. So we'll do matrix multiplication. and then multiply everything by the eigenvalue. And those are the values that we get. Now this matrix indicates the amount of variance and covariance accounted for by the first principal component. So remember, you can remember it's the first because it's our first eigenvector and the matrix of first component products, G. It is subtracted from the covariance matrix S to obtain S sub 1, which is the matrix of first component residuals, which once again, as we talked about in, a, in video 4.8, it indicates the amount of variance and covariance yet to be accounted for. So let's do that here. I have it equal to S minus G1. Those are the values that we get for the matrix of first component residuals. Now I indicated the second eigenvector that we get. And so S sub 1 is now factored into the same way to obtain the second eigenvector and eigenvalue, which is here. And the matrix of second component products, G2, is created. So we're going to take, I'm going to copy that here and let's get G2 so does this look familiar well not surprisingly this product matrix G sub 2 is actually 
equivalent to the matrix of first component residuals right here. Now I know in Excel there's some rounding error, but they're supposed to be exactly equivalent. So the matrix of second component residuals, S2, is therefore a matrix of zeros. And I will demonstrate that. So we're going to take S1 minus G2. And it pretty much equals zero there. If I work some magic, I can make it look like zero. There you go. So this is, a, of course, because we created this demonstration matrix to have a rank of two. So originally it had a rank of three, but since we changed the raw data, we changed 20 and 16 to give it a rank of two. So the two components would extract all of the variance and the covariance from the covariance matrix S. Lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two normalized eigenvectors, K1 and K2, and adjoin them to one another to create the matrix of PCA coefficients K. So all I'm going to do is copy and paste these two eigenvectors. So I'm adjoining them to get K. This is the matrix of principal components analysis transformation coefficients. When the original raw data matrix X is post multiplied by this matrix, as you can see denoted by Y, we're going to get uh, component scores or factor scores. So I'll demonstrate that here. And these are the factor scores of each of the six persons. We had, I think it was Al, Bill, Charlie, Dan, Ed, and Frank on the two principal components that were extracted from the covariance matrix. Uh, we'll talk about more this more in the next video, uh, but I hope this was helpful and beneficial beneficial to you. Bye.